Hi, my name's Carmen Geddes, and today we are gonna do a fun pot holder project. These are fun little holiday pot holders, and it seems like every time these holidays come around, we put together little gift baskets where we bake things for our friends and neighbors, and what better way to add to that than a fun little pot holder or two in the project. Um, we always have leftover when we make a quilt project, so that's kind of the focus of the project today. I like to kind of go and go through my extra fabrics that I have after doing a project. So for today, we are using some of our leftover squares from a project that are already cut out. Sometimes we will have a quilt block that's already finished and leftover. Another thing, sometimes we're making a project and we'll audition and we'll make one quilt block to see if we like our fabrics together. And so we have our leftover quilt block. One thing that's really fun about pot holders is you can make them in any size. So I've got several different sizes here. So just for non-holiday, this is, was a fun project where I had a bunch of half square triangles left over. So just putting together a cute quilt block that's gonna become a pot holder. So what we're gonna need for our project today, we picked, oh, I wanted to show you this. Or if you don't wanna have a pieced block, just use a fun piece of fabric, just one piece of fabric, so you don't have to piece something. So for our project today, what you're going to have is your quilt block that's all finished and pressed and ready to go. You're gonna cut out your batting fabric, batting backing, sorry. So notice on my back, I cut that out about a quarter of an inch bigger, all the way around, rather than matching up exactly and then you're going to use some batting. Now I'm using just a scrap of cotton batting, but there is an insulated batting that you can buy if you wanted to have a little bit more insulation. I usually don't use that one. If I feel like I need a little bit thicker hot pad, then I will just do two layers of batting. Okay, so we are, oh, the other thing you're going to need is your little tab, your little strip for your tab. So what I did is I just sewed two of my squares together. And so we'll talk about that in just a second. So to get started, we have our quilt block. We are gonna put that right sides together on our backing. And then I put the batting on the wrong side of the backing, batting, backing. We'll get those two straight. So what we have is our batting, our back fabric, so right sides together is our pot holder. So this is the sandwich that we're gonna make. So now before we start to sew, we want to make our little tab. So the easiest way to sew this tab, you're either gonna have a little strip of the fabric, about two and a half by four or five inches long, and then I have pressed half an inch down on either side, and then we'll just fold that over one more time, and give that a pressing, and then we're just gonna top stitch it down. So see, I've got this one all done and ready to go. So this is our little tab. Now when you sew the tab on the pot holder, you could sew this tab in the corner to hang it up on an angle, but to eliminate that bulk, I like to sew the tab about a half an inch away from the corner. That way, that bulk is not in that seam allowance when I'm trying to turn it inside out. Now another thing that was pointed out is if you have directional fabrics, so here I've got some little, oh here it is right here. Here's my ghost vapors. So I'm going to, and then here's this little fun directional fabric. So I'm going to hang, I'm gonna sew my tab up on this corner so that when my pot holder, if it is hanging up, my fabrics are directional. So let's stick a pin in this, about a half inch away. And then we're just gonna take this over to the sewing machine and just tack it down because we want to have that stay in place. When it's underneath the foot pedal, then I just take that pin out, just sew one little seam, just to tack that down. All right, so now we have our tab sewn on. We have our sandwich of our batting, our backing fabric right sides together with the quilt block. You make sure that that little tab is tucked into there. And we're gonna just put a few pins around this to hold it in place. 
And these make great teacher gifts. Seems like when my kids were in school, I was always trying to think what would be a fast gift for a teacher. And um, I think pot holders have turned out to be my very favorite teacher gift to make, and they always love them. So I've got four or five pins in this. Now, one thing that I want to point out, we're sewing this together like we would a pillow, right? So right sides together. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sewing all the way around our pot holder and then leaving a, a good four, about a four inch opening. Now, I don't know about you, but it seems like I have done this too many times where I am sewing around a pillow or a pot holder and I want to leave that opening done, but I'm having so much fun sewing that I go all the way around and I just keep on sewing and close the whole thing up. So for my own self, what I do is where I want to stop sewing, I put two pins, right? So that that is just a little tip that at least it has helped me a lot. Okay, so back over to the sewing machine. Now we want to have the, the we want to have our block or our pieced block or the front of the pot holder on top, right? Because the back was a little bit bigger. So we're going to start and let's get that down. I do a little, just a little back stitch. So what we're doing is we're sewing around the quilt block with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And we're going to stop now. If you want to, just to make it a little more secure, you can just back stitch right on that corner. And we're going to turn, go around this all the way. I just kind of like to make sure those corners are nice and secure. So if you do have seams, you just want to make sure that those seams in your block are going in the right direction. And let's turn. See, I can already tell I am really glad that I have that double pin <laughs> where I'm going to stop because I probably would just sew all the way around. A little back stitch. All right, so now we're turning the corner taking those pins out as I go. Oh yeah, one more corner to go. These are just a little bit addicting. I found myself wanting to make a whole stack of pot holders when we started this project. Okay, a little back stitch on our last corner. So here, ta-da, here's my double pin. So that is a good reminder to say, okay, Carmen, stop here, do a little back stitch. And we'll cut that. Okay, so now, before we turn this inside out, I like to trim a little bit of the bulk of that extra fabric and batting out of the way. What's most important are the corners. We want to clip that corner off. That's really going to help the corner of that pot holder be able to stick out and have a nice point to it. So you're going to trim all four corners, just a couple of threads away from your stitching. One more. And then I have quite a bit of extra. You don't need to trim it right up next to the fabric. You can do this with scissors or rotary cutter. Doesn't need to be exact. We're just kind of getting a little bit of that extra bulk out of the way. I can already tell this is going to be really cute. <laughs> now that sometimes you can use different tools to turn something inside out. Uh, sometimes they're called a tube turner. Let's see, now find our opening. Um, something like this is pretty easy to do just with your fingers. When you're turning a pillow or a pot holder inside out, when you've sewn something this way, the best way to turn it inside out is to reach down and grab one of those outer corners and pull that through the hole first because and then I just see how I just kind of reach in and turn find that other corner so I just reach in I'm kind of turning these corners gently come out there you go but if you grab one of those far corners first and kind of pull those corners through 
See how nice that turns inside out? So now just with your fingers, you find that corner and just push that out. So this is where a tube turner would have a little point to it if you want, but this is my little trick. When I turn something inside out, I grab each side right up close to that corner and I just give it a little shake, just give it a little wiggle. And that just seems to, see how that kind of works that corner right out. So we'll go around and wiggle those corners out. You also can kind of roll that edge. You're kind of redefining that seam where you've turned it inside out. I'm gonna reach in here where our tab is. There we go. Give that a wiggle. All four corners. Isn't that fun? Cute and fun. Okay, so now here's where your, get this out. All right, so here's your opening. So you are just going to fold this. Let's bring this over to the iron. I just love my little irons here. So just trying to keep that consistent with the seam allowance that you sewed when you fold that under. You can use steam if you want to, but this just kind of giving it some little memory and having it stay where it's supposed to be. Turn it over and do the back for good measure. You can just press your whole little pot holder if you want. Isn't that cute? Okay, so now if you want, you can hand sew this shut, but I'm gonna just do it on the sewing machine. So I'm gonna come over on the machine. When you are top stitching, I like to lengthen my stitch length just a little bit. So I'm going up to a 3.5 on this machine and then use your uh, presser foot as a guide and I am just going to do a little top stitch and I'm just gonna go all the way around the whole pot holder. Just kind of stopping at that corner and let's have that you know, go down. There we go and on we go. Let's give that a little help. It's always good to kind of start out a little slow on those corners. You have just a little bit of extra bulk. Now you don't need to top stitch all the way around the whole thing. If you want, you can just close up your opening and then just keep going. There we go. A top stitching. There we go. I guess slower is a little bit better when you're top stitching. And one more. And that adds a really nice little edge to your pot holder, gives it a little finished look. I keep wanting to call this a quilt. Couldn't this be a mini quilt? I, I think we could call it a quilt if we want to. <laughs> All right, last little part. Let's start out. So there we go. That works a lot better to go a little bit slower. Okay, so now. If you want to, you can quilt it at this point. So I'm gonna just do a little stitch in the ditch quilting on this. It'll just give your pot holder a little bit more dimension. And so I'm just leaving my regular thread in there and I'm keeping that stitch length just a little bit longer. Let's start out slow at the beginning to get that to go through. There we go, good. So this is kind of fun. You can go right in the little ditch in between. Now I'm just going to go right to the edge of my quilting, do a little back stitch, and then just cut that. Off we go, let's do the next one. This is a great way to practice your machine quilting skills, I think, on a fun little project like this. You can try stitch in the ditch, you can do some free motion quilting, um, or just fun straight line quilting is a great way to give that some texture and it also uh, gives it a little bit more stability. All right, so now we have finished our quilting. Okay, wasn't that fast and fun? Now you've got a finished pot holder.